Hi, seventh grade. Today, we are going to be learning how to add details to our buildings or our boxes that we worked on yesterday. Um, if you recall, we started the lesson by placing streets down onto the ground. And what the, that does is it establishes where the buildings should all line up. And if you follow directions, you made sure to leave a gap between your buildings and the actual road. Today I'm going to show you how to place sidewalks along those roads. So of course you're going to need your ruler, sharp pencil, and we're going to work from the vanishing point. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a sidewalk running along this road that's leading to the left. Now I have to kind of think about the scale of my city and I want to consider that I have sidewalk on this side of the road and also on the other side of that intersection. So I'm going to make sure that my ruler runs to the vanishing point and I'm going to run that sidewalk from the vanishing point to the road and then I'm going to stop where it hits the road and pick up on the other side. And you'll notice here that the sidewalk is looking like it's getting thicker as it comes towards us. Now we know that it's not actually widening as it comes towards the viewer. That's just the optical illusion. As things recede into the distance, they look like they're getting smaller. As things come towards us, it looks like they're getting wider. I'm gonna do the same thing um, going to the right vanishing point. And I wanna keep that sidewalk roughly the same width um, where they intersect here. So I'm gonna line up to my vanishing point. This one's not going to make it quite to the end of the paper. That's okay. And I'm going to draw my sidewalk and I'm not going to stop. I don't want it to cross over my building. And it's going to go to the vanishing point in the back. And I'll just extend my ruler out. Just like that. So now we've got um, an intersecting sidewalk that's happening. If I wanted to, I could give myself a tiny bit of height and create a curb right there. I always find that rather satisfying. Um, because I have kind of a zoomed out cityscape here, I don't want to see too much of that curb. It might be just a tiny bit of thickness that's almost, almost um, indistinguishable as it goes into the distance. But I think that's kind of a fun little trick if you want to show that there is height to the sidewalk where a pedestrian would step up. If I want to make sidewalk lines, if I want to make the cracks in the sidewalk, I also have to use the vanishing point. Um, a good rule of thumb when you're working in perspective, two-point perspective, is all of your lines either have to go perfectly vertical or point to a vanishing point. If you have any line on this drawing that isn't perfectly vertical or pointing to vanishing points, it's not going to be correct. So just keep uh, making sure you're checking your work as you go. Okay. The reason I'm saying that is because on sidewalk lines, a lot of times kids just get a little overconfident and they just start drawing them um, how they think they should line up. And what ends up happening is it makes your sidewalk kind of look like a, a tipped over fence. We really wanna make sure that we're using vanishing points. So if your sidewalk is shooting to the left vanishing point, the lines of that sidewalk are going to point to the right vanishing point because we know that the sidewalk and the cracks in the sidewalk run perpendicular. So we wanna create that illusion by using opposite vanishing points. So if I'm going to the left with my sidewalk, I'm going to the right with the cracks in the sidewalk. And I'm just going to, I'm not gonna um, draw downward on the curb, I'm just gonna draw across the space. And I'm probably not gonna go the whole way, but I just wanna give you the idea. So I'm keeping my ruler um, connected at the vanishing point and I'm just pivoting upward to create my sidewalk lines. And you just kinda have to eyeball the spacing. I'm not expecting perfection at this point, so you kinda get the idea. So I'm not gonna go the entire way, but you can see here now that I'm creating those little blocks of concrete that create our sidewalks. And they're gonna appear to kind of flatten as they rise up towards the vanishing point, or the horizon line, because we know as, um, as squares kind of come close to our eye level, we see a little bit less of them. Now, if my sidewalk is going to the right, I'm going to use my left vanishing point. And for me, because I'm right-handed, this is a tiny bit easier pencil on the right. And again, I'm not going to go the whole way. I just want you to get the idea. 
Um, you could have fun. You could make along your sidewalk here, you could put a little like a gutter or um, a grate or a drain. If you got really into your details, you could make a dotted line running down your street. I bet you could figure that out using your vanishing point. So that's how you create sidewalks. I find that it's a really helpful detail. Um, definitely makes your city come alive. Okay, now if we're going to work on buildings and we're creating windows and doors, I like to start with doors because I feel like the door is usually the first thing you might notice about the entrance of a building. And if you're creating a door, the sides of the door are gonna stand perfectly vertical. We don't want our doors slanting, we want them perfectly vertical. And then this door that I'm putting on my building is on the right side right because this is the left side we've got the right side so anything I'm putting on the right side is going to use the right vanishing point so that's an easy rule to remember so I want to make sure that the top of my door is using the right vanishing point so the top of the door and the bottom of the door are going to run to the vanishing point and then I want to make mine look like maybe it's a like a double door here if I wanted to I do like getting um, a little more detailed when I draw, but I'm just going to make kind of the suggestion of handles there. Um, maybe you want to create a door frame. I usually find structures on buildings become a little bit more believable when you include the elements that hold them in. So your windows will a lot of times have frames, doors will have frames. You don't have to do them, but I kind of think they look kind of nice. Maybe I want to make a, a little walkway or like a rug or a pathway leading out from the door. I can't just connect them to the sidewalk like that because those lines don't use a vanishing point. So if I want to make it look like there's a little path between the sidewalk and the entrance, I would use my vanishing point. And I'm going to go from the inside of the door there to the sidewalk. Maybe you've got a little walkway. If I wanted to make it maybe an alley, kind of run between these buildings or some sort of pathway for people walking, I could use my right vanishing point to create a little path running through there. Um, for windows, this is, windows are actually pretty easy. I think we tend to overcomplicate them. Um, because they are typically either square or rectangle, they are going to use the vanishing points. And a lot of times kids will draw individual windows, like they'll work on one at a time and it gets really exhausting. You can actually do a whole series of windows at one time and then just erase away the spacing. So if I'm putting windows on this building, and I'm working on the right wall, I'm using the right vanishing point. So I'm going to establish a block of windows. And how do I wanna do this? Now I'm gonna split it in half. So that this is gonna become a space. So we're gonna split it like that. See how now it looks like one giant window and a smaller window there? I think I'm gonna split them again. I th I'm gonna split each of these in two. My sizing is not perfect. If I really wanted to be precise, I could make measurements on this corner here. But I want to give you the idea. So now I can erase those lines. And I've created now four panel windows. And if I wanted to, and I'm going to, I'm going to break these down even further. That's not too bad considering I'm not I'm working pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my mirror, or I'm sorry, my ruler through the panels to separate them. And I think I'll do that a couple times. So now it looks like a multi-story building with rows of windows. 
I could space all of these windows out too if I wanted to, maybe make it look like a hotel. Um, typically, if I do a window style on one side, I do the same style on the other, though it's completely up to you. Um, if I were to do any um, windows and doors on this side, I would of course use that vanishing point. Um, maybe I could put a sign on this uh, building. I could put a billboard on top of it if I wanted to. Let's see how that looks. So I'm going to put a billboard with the vertical sides. And since it's on the left, it's going to go to the left vanishing point. I could create a little thickness. I'm really getting detailed here, but. Pardon my shoddy craftsmanship. I just really want to kind of create this illusion for you. And then let's say maybe it's got some sort of structure holding it up behind. But I could do a billboard. Um, I think in yesterday's video I mentioned how to make a railing. So maybe I want to make like a little rooftop situation here with railings. I would use my vanishing points, of course, and since I want my railing to be kind of see-through, looks like it's going to go kind of like that, just getting cut off behind the building. And then, you know, I'm going to have some of these vertical lines to be the support holding up that upper beam. So it goes rather quickly. Once you figure the rules out, you can work. Um, at, a, at a rather quick pace. Um, for today, I just want you to play around. Try some different window styles. You could try doing lettering if you created a sign. You could include, you know, a little trash can <laughs> or some sort of, or I could make it maybe a plant, like a topiary, something a little bit more fancy for the people coming into this building. Um, maybe your alleyway will have a little dumpster. I'm just sketching here. So you can use these spaces however you wish. You can make this a park over here. You can make a parking lot. It's totally up to you. Um, so have fun today. Just play around with some new ideas. And uh, yeah, keep your pencil sharp and use your ruler.